All right, let's sing it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn that I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgment. I am afflicted very much, quick in me, O Yahuwah, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will of the rings of my mouth, O Yahuwah, and this be thy judgment. So is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget thy Torah. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I heard not from thy precepts. Thy testimony is have I taken as a heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform the statutes always, even unto the end. Summit of I hate vain thoughts, but the Torah do I love. I wipe my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word, depart from me, evil doers. I will keep the commandments of my Elohim. Hold me according to thy word that I may live. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect. To thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that are from thy statutes, and their deceit is falsehood. The good is away, all the wicked of the earth, like cross. Therefore, I love thy testimony. I bless, tremble for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect. To thy statutes continually. One more time, one more seven. Hold thou me up, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect. To thy statutes continually. And to thy statutes continually. All right, come on out. To thy statutes continually. Amen and amen. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Let's pray. Father Yahuwah in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, the Elohim of Abraham, Yatsak and Yaakov, the Elohim of David, of Moshe, the Father, na 
uh, salamat po sa lahat ng sa lahat ng parang ng mga biyaya na patuloy niyo pong binibigay sa amin. Salamat sa oras na to Panginoon sa panibagong araw na to, sa panibagong linggo na to na pinagkalob niyo po sa amin. Salamat Panginoon sa lahat ng blessings na patuloy niyo pong binibigay. At salamat sa maayos na kalusugan para sa bawat isa Panginoon. Salamat din po Panginoon sa technology na ginagamit mo na nakakapag-aral po kami at lumalago ng sabay-sabay sa inyong salita. And uh, I pray, Father, sa, sa oras na to mag-aaral po ulit kami. Ang dalangin ko, Panginoon, kayo po rin po ang manguna sa inyong gawain. And pangunahan niyo po yung um, preacher na magtuturo sa amin. And kayo po yung magbigay ng tamang salita. And sa bawat makikinig, Panginoon, I pray, Father, magbigay niyo po kami ng tamang puso, ng tamang isip na maunawaan po namin ang inyong mensahe sa gabing ito. Sa mga kapatid namin na nasa labas, mga nasa trabaho, I pray, Father, yung pag-iingat para sa kanila. At sa mga kapatid namin na pauwi pa lang galing ng trabaho, dalakin ko, Panginoon, ay atin po sila sa kanilang mga tahanan maayos at ligtas. And salamat Panginoon sa mga pamilya po namin na hindi po namin kasama na sa ibang lugar sa Pilipinas, na sa UAE, sa Saudi Arabia, sa ibang panig ng mundo Panginoon. Dalangin ko Panginoon yung pag-iingat para sa kanila. Ang dalhin niyo po yung bawat isa sa inyong gawain ng sagayon Panginoon. Matuto po kami. Makilala po namin kayo ngayong gabi. Pag-aaralan po namin ang, ang inyong mga mga panahon na itinalaga, ay yung mga feast na itinalaga. Dalangin ko Panginoon, Panginoon, kayo po yung magpaunawa nito sa amin, banal na esperto ang Oax Kodesh, kayo po yung magpaunawa nito sa amin na maintindihan po namin ang sagayon Panginoon, magawa po namin ng may tamang puso, ng tamang pagkakaunawa, Panginoon. And salamat po, salamat sa pagbukas ng aming isipan, salamat sa lahat ng mga ito, and may mga pagkakataon na nagkakamali kami, Panginoon, alam niyo po yung puso ng bawat isa, patawarin niyo po kami, and linisin mo po kami ng mga karapat. Dapat po kami na lumapit po sa inyo. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa inyong dakilang pangalan, Yahua, at sa inyong, sa inyong anak na si Yahusha. Amen and Amen. Alright, let's sing one more song, mga kapatid. Yung bago nating singing verse for the week, Ayin. That would be 121 hanggang 128. Alright? Ayan, 121 to 128. Meron na pong susunod by next week. And may, may advance na po tayo for next week na nasa online na rin po. So, I hope and pray na kinakanta na po natin siya. But for this time, one, kantahin natin yung for this week, 121 to 128. That will be Ayan Octave. Alright? Same thing. I have done judgment and justice. Give me not to mine oppressors. Be sure for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according to thy mercy. It's me thy statue. I am thy servant, give me understanding, that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Yahuwah, to work, for they have made boy thy Torah. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yeah, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. One more time, 121. I have done judgment and justice in me not to my oppressors. Be sure for thy judgment for good, for thy servant, sorry. 
Let not the proud oppress me. I spill for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Fill with thy servant according to thy mercy. It's me thy statue. I am thy servant, give me understanding, that I may know thy testimony. It is time for thee, Yahuwah, to work, for they have made void thy Torah. Therefore, I love thy commandment above gold, yeah, above fine gold. Therefore, I seem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. What to say one more time? Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be what and I think every false way to be right and I hate every false way. Amen and amen. Magandang gabi po sa lahat. Amen, amen. Thank you for Brother Gary and thank you to our lovely guitarist na bihira po natin makita sa ating screen. Thank you so much for uh, strumming for us. At uh, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. And tonight, we'll be talking about the Moed. Alright, the Moed Dim. So it's actually the appointed times. We won't go into detail on each one yet, but we'll give you an introduction of why we celebrate the appointed times and why, why we need to observe this. Because uh, maybe some of us are still inclined and baka makita ko pa kayo sa mga Christmas party later on. <laughs> So let's get a better understanding of the appointed times. I, I, I believe we've studied uh, this uh, six months ago. Kasi magsi seventh month na. Seventh month na. So six months ago, we studied it before uh, we took the Passover. And uh, we, we tend to forget what we study. So ngayon po ay pag aralan natin uli ang mga napag-aralan natin but this one is more inclined to the seventh month feast days all right so kung bibilangin niyo po i believe it started in march if my math is correct it started in math march 25 which is the first day it's march 25 or march 26 which is the first day of uh, uh the first month of the hebrew calendar kaya po on april 8 we celebrated uh, the Passover, which is supposed to be April 9, because we did it in the evening. All right. And uh, kung bibilangin nyo po, exacto po tong September 19 as the first day. Kung bibilangin nyo for a month, 30 days a month, ay exacto po yung September 19. And if you also look at it, it's actually the first day of the new moon. So, grabe lang ang, uh, ang timing ng Panginoon and when you calculate the movements of the moon and also the lunar, lunar, uh, ano ba yung tawag sa araw? Solar and lunar calendar, ay makikita mo that Yahuwah has a more perfect structure in His uh, months and times. Alright? So, hopefully we'll touch on calendars later on as well. Para baka kasi nalilito kayo, bakit pa iba-iba? Pero kung titignan nyo, it was actually changed by the Romans. Okay? 
So, bago po tayo magsimula, let's open our scriptures to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23. And if you are there, we will start from verse 23 onwards. Okay? Verse 23 onwards. I'll just read verses 1 to 4, and then I'll jump to verse 23. All right? Are we all there? Okay. So Leviticus chapter 23 says in verse 1, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts, all right? The feasts, or otherwise called, I'll, I'll, I'll use the word appointed time. Thank you. It says here, uh, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the appointed time of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my appointed times. Verse 3, Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. So verses 1 and 2 talk about the weekly appointed time, which is the Sabbath. All right. And then verse 4 starts with, These are the appointed times of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in there. The seasons and feasts here are the same word. All right. That you shall proclaim in their appointed times. In verse uh I'll jump to verse 23. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So that is Yom Teruah. Okay? Verse 26. And Yahuwah, uh, and Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. This is Yom Kippur. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall do no work in, that, in the, that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before Yahuwah, your Elohim. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the soul will be, will I destroy among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Verse 32. It shall be unto your Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month, at even, from even to even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Verse 33. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Yahuwah. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. Verse 37. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of Yahuwah, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto Yahuwah. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, 
and you shall rejoice before Yahuwah, your Elohim, seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto Yahuwah seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And Moshe declared unto the children of Yisrael the appointed times of Yahuwah. All right, let's go to Yahweh in prayer. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Our Elohim, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for this time where we can once again read your word and study it and discuss it. I pray that, Father, please give us wisdom and understanding in our study tonight. Please help us to uh, understand, Father, your Moedim. And we pray, dear Father, continue to work in our lives as we start learning these uh, appointed times that you have said. I pray, dear Father, that uh, as we learn of it, may you help us in observing it correctly. We may fail uh, a few times. We may, we may fail uh, these first times. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, and we ask, Father, that uh, help us to know what it means help us to understand why we need to follow it and help us father to observe it from our hearts and uh, i pray dear father that it will be part of our life not as a tradition but more of understanding your will in our lives understanding your seven thousand year plan understanding father that this is an appointed time to remind us of your calendar and we pray, dear Father, please guide us as we study um, these tonight. And as we dig in deep to your word, we pray, dear Father, give us understanding in everything that we will be discussing. Thank you, Father, for this evening. May we glorify you and we magnify your law. We magnify your name. And all of these things we ask and pray in your son's name, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen and Amen. All right, so magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat ulit. So right here in your screens, you can see Yahuwah's appointed times. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, ay paulit-ulit po natin yan, uulit-ulitin, <laughs> paulit-ulit, uulit-ulitin, para maitanim po sa puso natin that we may all understand. And kung may tanong po kayo, please feel free to ask. We will be tackling Yom Teruah in one of our scripture studies, Yom Kippur in one of our scripture studies, and Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, or Feast of Booths, in one of our studies. At nabasa po natin lahat yan in Leviticus chapter 23. Nabaybay po natin, but we'll go uh, into deeper study to it. Um, and the scripture studies will discuss what we need to do. Kasi kung nabasa nyo, there are offerings that we need to offer. So later on, pag-uusapan po natin yan so that hindi po kayo natataranta kung saan kayo kukuha ng free will offerings nyo, yung uh, whatever gifts. We'll talk about that one by one and uh, just be patient in our studies. Uh, today, we'll be discussing why we need to follow the appointed times. All right. So let me start and stop sharing the screen. And uh, if you can see behind me, discuss po muna natin yung word na moed, all right? Moed, which is the appointed times. Uh, I'll just show you here in the Blue Letter Bible. At makikita po natin dito, uh, this is verse 2. Sabi po dito, speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them concerning the moed, all right? So this is... Kung mapapansin nyo, itong Hebrew, pa isa isa lang po ang salita. So, uh, the English speakers or the English translators are trying to connect the words together. Kaya po, minsan may mga additional words, especially if you've seen my post earlier, may mga nadadagdag na salita in conjunction with uh, to make sense of uh, 
the phrases or the sentences, pero kung titignan nyo, when it comes to say unto them concerning the appointed times, the moed. Alright, the mowed. So that's the word. And yan po yung nakikita nyo sa likod ko. Hopefully, malinaw po yan. It's spelled mem, wow, ayin, dalet. Now, so, babasahin dyan, of Yahuwah, which you shall proclaim to be holy. Remember the word Kodesh, Ruach HaKodesh. We've got the word Kodesh right there. Mikra. And then he says here, even these are my feasts. Again, the word mowed. Now, moed means appointed times. So, it's more of ito yung itinalagang araw ng Panginoon. A lot of people say these are Jewish festivals. We are wrong on that. Alright? We are wrong on that. Why? Because Yahuwah said, these are my appointed times. These are my moed. Hindi po sinabi na ito po ay Jewish feast or Israelite feast, sabi ng Panginoon, these are my appointed times. So, an appointed time is not just an ordinary day. An appointed time should be something that we need to set. Kaya nga po siya, appointed. Kapag tayo ay pumunta, parang yung isang kapatira natin na nagpunta sa dentista, kailangan niya ng appointment. Otherwise, hindi siya entertain ng kanyang dentista. So, that was an appointed time. Now, these appointed times are set by Yahuwah. Now, balikan po natin ito. Uh, just wanted to insert this because this is really good. And I am really amazed when I look at the picture, picto, picture letters of the Hebrew language. Alright? So, napaka, ako'y na-amazed. In every word that I study, I, I study the shofar. And we'll go to that when we study Yom Teruah. Napaka-gandang pag-aralan ng word na shofar. I know it's not a feast of trumpets, but shofar has uh, a significant meaning as well. Just like what you see in my shirt, this is uh, Yahuwah, yod Hey wow Hey, And I explained this to you earlier, an arm reaching out to a spiritual man, setting up his uh, tent peg or... Uh, establishing your tent with him every day, Kapo, and then you have two spiritual mats. So, I explained earlier in our previous scripture studies that when you read a Hebrew word from using Hebrew letters, you start with the outside letters. All right, the outside letters paint the picture, and the inside letters is the heart of the picture. And pag-aralan natin tong word na mem, wow, ayin, and Dalet. All right, I've got the picture letters here. Mem, all right. Mem talks about water, all right. It's a picture of water. Yan po yung ancient otiot or yung pinaka old old picture ng letter, all right. So it's a water. It can also be a blood. So is it talks about liquid, all right. It talks about liquid and. Uh, Mightiness, you know that the sea is mighty, and it can also talk about chaos. It can also uh, talk about flow, all right? Flow ng tubig. So, isipin nyo, flow, water, yan ang ibig sabihin ng mem. Okay? Now, let's, let's look at the last letter, dalet. Dalet, madali po itong tandaan, the door, all right? Door. Dalet, it's a picture of a door. As we know, Yasha is the door. Uh, door moving back and forth as well. It's a picture of weakness, dangling, kasi yung door, di ba, gaganong-ganon lang, lalo na pag hindi nakalak. It also talks about four dimensions of space and time. It also talks about entering a door in and out. So it could be a picture of, uh, it says four dimensions of space and time. So it could be a spiritual, physical to spiritual or spiritual to physical aspect. All right? So, yan po yung picture ng door. So, by just looking at Mem and Dalet, all right, it shows us that if it's water, if you put water in a certain direction, like a river, it will flow into a certain door, all right? So, that's the picture. Yan po yung picture ng Moet, all right? So, makikita natin, water, door, entering, going out, entering. So, kung may flow yung tubig, it's entering a door. So, it's going in one direction. 
Now let's look at the heart, the heart of the word. Let's go to the word wow. Ito pinag-aralan na natin to. This is wow. Hindi po 10 pigs ha. Ito po yung tent peg. <laughs> All right? Peg ng tent. Yung nag nag uh, ho hold sa tent para hindi liparin ng hangin. And this is really good because a tent peg I secure something. All right? It definitely secures a tent. It can also mean that we set our tent with Yahuwah always. All right? So basically, Yahuwah is painting, has painted this picture that we enter this door. Okay? Yun yung picture na pinipain. But the heart of the word is to secure. All right? To secure this. So appointed time. So secure these dates. Pwede natin tingnan ng ganon. Let's look at the next letter, which is Ayin. This is very interesting. Ayin, madali rin po itong tandaan kasi pag sinabi mo Ayin, it talks about an I. Alright? So, Ayin. Ayin is an I. Okay? So, itong dalawa, ten peg and I. So, it talks about spiritual vision, spiritual sight. can also talk about to watch, to know. It talks about the word and his ruach converging in your soul. It's really talking about Yahuwah looking at us and seeing if we've set our tent peg or if we've set our tent with Him and if we are entering that door in the flow of uh, the water going into the door. So makikita mo that Yahuwah wants us to go with that flow to enter His door, all right? To enter his door and set to secure these appointed times because he's looking at us. And it's the same time that kapag, kung pag-aaralan niyo po ang scripture, if, you, if we continue studying scripture, these times are celebrated also in heaven. So kung nagsiselebrate po sila doon, on these appointed times, hindi ba dapat na tayo ay sumasabay sa kanila. Now, here's the problem. If you're celebrating Christmas and if you're celebrating Easter at hindi ito, ito yung appointed times ng Panginoon, hindi ito yung mga itinalagang araw ng Panginoon, then we're not aligning with what's happening in heaven. We're not aligning with what's happening uh, with what they're doing there. Alright? So, if these appointed times are simultaneously or year annually celebrated, hindi ba dapat na nag-aalign din tayo sa pag-celebrate natin ito? Alright? Brother Gary, anything you would like to add before I continue? Alright. So, tandaan niyo po yan because uh, I think it's uh, we'll be continuing studying words para mas ma ma-familiarize tayo in the Hebrew letters. I know these are these are different from what you see there. I explain po natin yan later on. But uh, there are three types of uh, Hebrew letters that I know of. These are the ancient, ancient one. These are the pre kenyan one, which are called the Otiot. Then you have yung una kong sinuot na t-shirt, which is the Paleo Hebrew. And then we have the modern Hebrew right here. All right, so I hope you see the picture of that. And ulitin ko lang, mem, water. Wow is a tent peg. Ito, this is, lalo na kung lagi nyo nakikita sa t-shirt ko, yung wow, it means I want to establish a tent or I will pitch a tent with Elohim every day. All right? Yun din po ang isang ibig sabihin ng yod hey, wow hey, that... Yahuwah wants to pitch a tent with us every day. And then ayin, spiritual side, and then the door, it's uh, going in, going in that door. Okay, so from, from physical to spiritual, you can look at it that way. All right, so why do we need to observe the moed? Bakit? Kasi nga, in established ng Panginoon, and he has, he has said in Leviticus chapter 23 
that these are my feasts. If you go to verse 44, yung last verse na binasa natin dito, and Moshe declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of Yahuwah. He did not say the feast of the Hebrews. He did not say the feast of the Israelites. He did not say the feast of the Jews. He did not even say the feast of Moshe. He said the feast of Yahuwah. And these are statutes for ever. All right? At binasa po natin yan dito sa... Uh, Verse 1 to 4. Okay? It, uh, actually, somewhere there. Okay? So, why do we need to observe the feast days? First, one reason is because the world has its own feast days as well. All right? The world has its own holidays. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Now, as we continue our study, remember, nandun na tayo sa bow. Last uh, Sabbath day, we studied about bow. They were about to go out of the promised land, uh, out of Egypt, sorry, going into the promised land. Pero matagal-tagal pa sila makakapasok ng promised land. And before they entered into the promised land, Yahuwah would give them instructions and would tell them specifically why Yahuwah would kick them out of the land. Obviously, we know why because nung pinag-aralan po natin in the book of Genesis, it was uh, Shem's land, but Canaan took over it. Yung anak ni Ham, he took over it, kaya binabalik lang din ang Panginoon. But, if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse uh, 29, makikita po datin dito ang rason. In verse 29, I'll start in verse 28. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee. So, Yahuwah was giving his commandments. And uh, it says here, And with thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of Yahuwah thy Elohim. Verse 29. When Yahuwah thy Elohim shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land. Verse 30. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Alright? Mag-ingat kayo dahil kapag hindi nyo sila sinakop lahat, ay maaring sundin nyo sila. Alright? It says here in verse 30. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not, after their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So, it's the curiosity of entering into the land kasi parang nagda-doubt ka ngayon kung sino ba yung Diyos nila. And then you ask, and then they would eventually fall into that trap. And if you read the book of Joshua, they actually let a lot of them live. All right, they, they were just made tributaries. Verse 31, Thou shalt not do unto Yahuwah, do so unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahuwah which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Verse 32, What thing soever I command you, observe to do it, Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So, the reason why we need to observe the appointed times is because the holidays that we have uh, observed in the past are not Yahuwah's holy days. Alright? That means, tayo yung describe na Gentiles dito. If we were living in that ta era, if we were living in the time of Moshe, we, we, should, we could have been killed. <laughs> diba? Kung tayo yung nakatira dun sa Canaan and we were following other rituals, uh, other traditions, which if kung pag-aaralan po talaga ng isang mana ng palataya at kung talagang sasaliksikin po ng isang naniniwala sa Panginoong Yahusha Hamashiach, he will realize that the holidays that the world celebrates, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, um, ano ba? Valentine's Day, uh, napakadami. 
in Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, and all the days which are not in Scripture are pagan holidays. All right? If they're not written in Leviticus chapter 23 and not written in other books of the Scripture, they are not Yahuwah's holy days. Kita nyo pati yung word na holiday is taken from the word holy days which is a direct uh, hindi man natin napapansin pero nakikita nyo na binabago talaga ng mundo at pag-aaralan po natin yan even the calendars baka si magtanong kayo bakit next year iba na naman yung araw so we'll talk about that later on pero the reason why we need to observe the appointed times is because we have been observing the pagan days in the past, all right? For me, in the past, I would say in the past 39 years, I have been observing the pagan days. So it's time, 38 lang pala. <laughs> it's time to fix that. It's time to follow Yahuwah because kung sinasabi ko na naniniwala ako kay Yahushua Hamashiach, if I'm saying I'm a believer and uh, I am a follower of the Creator, then we should follow his feast days. Kasi paulit-ulit lang po dito in Scripture, not only in Deuteronomy, but also in uh, in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, in uh, all of the other prophets. He even said in one of uh, the verses, I can't remember where it was, if you can tell me where it is. He said, I hate your feast days. I abhor what you're doing in front of me. I don't like the singing. He's, he's just uh, fed up of what the Israelites were doing. Why? Because they mixed pagan and the holidays of the world. All right? So I hope ma realize din po natin lahat ito. And I hope everybody who's joining us in this assembly will start observing these holidays. Holy days. Sige naman, pati ako nagkakamali sa mga sinasabi ko. Holy days. Now, I'll give you an example that we should learn from history. Go to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Okay? Pwede natin sabihin, hindi pa nila alam ang mga nangyayari dito. So, Yahuwah gave them the commandments. Alright? They've, they've been given the appointed times. If you go to Exodus chapter, what did I say? 32. Exodus chapter 32. 32 na lang. All right. Exodus chapter 32. So definitely, in uh, the previous verses here, in chapter 31, the Sabbath has been given already. All right. And in the previous chapters, if you go to uh, chapter 12 and 13, the Passover was given. All right. And also the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Day of Pentecost or the Feast of Harvest were given in the previous verses. Now, in verse 13 of chapter 31, also chapter 31, it says here, Speak thou also unto the children of Yashrael, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am Yahuwah that doth sanctify you. Napakalinaw po nun. The Sabbath is throughout all the generations. And uh, nakakalungkot man isipin na meron po tayong mga kasama dati na alam in the future mangyayari yung Sabbath in the book of Ezekiel it, it does talk about that but they still do not want to follow it in the present generation na malino naman that uh, it has been ordered by Yahuwah and find me a verse in the New Testament or in the Old Testament in the New Testament that commands you to follow Yahuwah or commands you to worship on Sunday. Okay? To worship on Sunday. Sa bigyan nyo ako ng verse na magsasabi niyan, then you might convince me. Pero, I tell you, I read my scripture, it's, uh, there's no verse that talks about Sunday worship. Alright? There's no verse that talks about first day of the week worship. Paulit-ulit dito sa ating pag-aaralan, it's all about the Sabbath. It's all about the seventh day. Sabi in verse 14, You shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. So, now, 
I want you to see here also the appointed times. May utos po ang Panginoon. The appointed times give us instructions on what to do on those days. Hindi katulad ng Christmas na kahit ano lang pwede niyong gawin, okay na kayo. Hindi katulad ng Easter, yung tradisyon na gigising tayo ng alas 5 ng umaga, alas 4 ng umaga bago mag-sunrise para abutan natin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo na uh, bumangon sa patay. Hindi po ganon. Now, in Scripture, you will read the specific instructions on what to do on these appointed times. And the Sabbath is a weekly appointed time. Sabi po dyan, it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 15, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahuwah, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Maraming tao nagsasabi, kita mo, puro patayan yang yang patas ng Panginoon. Bakit hindi muna natin sundin? Bakit namamatay ka ba pag nagtrabaho on Sabbath today? No. But why are you not following it? Verse 16, Wherefore, the children of Yashrael shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, listen, for a perpetual covenant. What does perpetual mean? Tuloy-tuloy. Tuloy-tuloy, 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 tuloy. All right? Perpetual. Verse 17, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Last Saturday, we talked about the sign. We talked about the mark. The mark of Yahuwah and the mark of the beast. If you're following the Sabbath, at least we are following the sign of Yahuwah. And it's a sign between you and Yahuwah. All right? It says here, For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed, and he gave unto Moshe when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tablet, tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of Elohim. So this story is actually on top of Mount Sinai. You have, if you can picture this, you have Moshe and you have uh, Yahuwah uh, doing this, uh, doing the tablets, giving the tablets to him. All right. Now, ito na po yung pag-aaralan natin. Chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aharon and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For us this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aharon. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Yisrael, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 5, And when Aharon saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aharon made proclamation and said, all right, what did he say? Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. All right? So makikita natin dito that they made their own feasts. All right? Dahil sa kanilang uh, uh, pagkaka sila ay nababato na, na hindi nila nakikita si Moses. All right? And remember, now I, wa I want you to picture this in your mind. These were Israelites. But there was a mixed multitude, a couple of them Egyptians, who, who followed them. So, marami pong consensus. Alright? May consensus and there was a, a, a lot of paganism in their system previously. So ngayon, when Moshe was not showing up, remember, Moshe said, I'll be back in, I'll be there in 40 days. But they could not really wait and 40 days is actually a long time. Di ba? Nung nag-lockdown nga, tagal na tagal na tayo sa dalawang linggo, sa tatlong linggo, 40 days is one month and almost and a half. So, they were, uh, nababagot na sila. Ano bang English, English na nababagot? Uh, they were bored. <laughs> they were bored. They, 
they wanted to do something and they want, let's say they wanted to worship, but Moshe was not around. So eventually what happened was they had made this golden calf. All right. They made this golden calf. And here's the problem. In verse five, Aaron said, tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. Without, without getting any further instruction from Moshe or getting uh, that command that ito yung mga feast days. Remember, the Passover was given. The feast of uh, harvest, the feast of first fruits were given, but not the other feast days yet. Pero dito, makikita natin that people are more inclined to what they have been used to. All right? They have been used to worshipping a calf in Egypt. They have been used to pagan practices in Egypt. And ganun din po tayo. So we have to learn from history that now we're reading the scriptures word for word. We're reading it. Uh, we're reading the commandments. We're reading the Moedim. We're reading the, the appointed times. We should understand that what we should be observing are only the appointed times of Yahuwah Nothing more and nothing less. All right. So I hope malino po kung bakit tayo sa sa bakit tayo mag-observe ng mga appointed times is because that's what that is what Yahuwah commanded. Inutos ba ng panginoon na i-worship natin yung Christmas? No, never in the scriptures. Did he even say to worship him on an Easter? I know the word Easter is in your scriptures. It's actually in Acts. Chapter 12, na it's 11, all right? Sabihin ko na sa inyo, it's 11. Why? Because that word is Pascha. And that word should be Passover if it's truly, if it needs to be translated in English, it needs to be Passover, hindi po Easter. So makikita natin dito na may pakunti-kunting 11 na dinadagdag sa ating scriptures so that a lot of people can justify what they do Salamat na lang sa Panginoon na walang Christmas. But still, a lot of people justify Christmas because it's a time of giving, it's a time of love, and we really have to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. Pero hindi naman talaga, alam naman natin na hindi dun yung araw na pinanganak. Di ba? And, but people will justify these holy holidays. So, for us to get out of the system of the world, to get out of Babylon, it has confused a lot of people already. And it has confused us. And some of us are still confused about these holidays. Bakit hindi na kami, lalo na kung nasa Pilipinas na kayo, sabihin nyo, grabe naman, napaka-killjoy naman ni Brother MB para hindi kami mag-celebrate ng, ng Christmas. Well, what sets us apart are Yahuwah's holy days. And what people will see in us, even if they don't understand the first time, they will see a difference. It may take years for them to truly understand it. But if you set that tent peg with Yahuwah, and if you establish it in your life, just like the tent peg here, you establish these appointed days in your life, at least tama kayo sa harapan ng Panginoon. Who cares kung ang tao sabihin sa iyo napaka-killjoy mo naman. Kasi later on when when the end times come, when judgment day comes, it's between you and Yahuwah and you will be accountable in everything that you have done in your life. All right? Ngayon, the door, dalit, the door has opened to us to understand all these Moedim. Simple lang. Pitong beses lang sa isang taon. Yung dalawa, tigwalong araw. Tama ba? Walo din, walo din yung feast day. Ah, seven and a half. <laughs> Dalawang tigisang linggo. Pero most of them, one day, and all of them are Sabbaths. Alright? All of them are Sabbaths. All of them are holy convocations. So, we all have to be aware kung paano natin at kung Dapat na, na dapat nating sundin ang mga araw na to. Why? Because we have to learn from history because here in Exodus chapter 32, you see here a clear uh, self, uh, self-proclaimed feast day. At kung makikita nyo dyan, para yung concert. 
Alright? Sasabihin ni Joshua, i- i- ano ko lang, kwento ko na lang sa inyo. Sabihin ni Joshua, parang may nagko-concert dun sa baba. Alright? Parang may nagko-concert dun sa baba. Sabi niya, or may nagigera. Sabi niya, ganun. Then, Moshe, nung sinilip nila, aba, nagsasayawan na, nagpipiesta na. Kaya nga, mahirap din gamitin yung word na festival eh. Some, some translations have used the word festival and even feasts. But, uh, we have to understand that these are holy days. Alright? At yung ginawa ng mga Israelites at that time was not holy in front of Yahuwah. First of all, they made a golden calf. Second, parang, parang Christmas lang. We make a Christmas tree. Does that matter? Yes, it does. It's a tree. Alright? It's a tree that we put gold and silver on it na hindi dapat natin ginagawa. And... Uh, we just have to worship Yahuwah in spirit and in truth. In everything that we do, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Alright? So, yun nga, katulad ng, kung babasahin nyo yan, chapter 32, then you will realize that they sin before Yahuwah. So, same thing if we celebrate Christmas and all of the other holidays. We are continue to, continuing, we continue to sin in front of Yahuwah every time we do not follow the appointed times kahit alam na natin you're you may be doubting basahin niyo po yung scripture that's my encouragement to you just read scripture and you will see that Yahuwah never abolished these holy days all right the holy days are intact you go to the new testament even apostle paul observed the holy days even yahusha himself observed the holy days he was actually the passover lamb on the day of the Passover that was uh, offered. All right? So makikita po natin that these are all important days to Yahuwah. Anything you would like to add, Brother Gary? All right. Uh, if you read the whole chapter of Exodus chapter 32, makikita po natin dyan kung ano yung parusa ng mga gumawa ng ganun sa Panginoon. Yung gumawa ng sarili nilang feast ay lahat po yung pinagpapatay. And that comes, dun sa, mga, dun sa nangyari na yan, ngayon natin dapat mas nakikita, mas na-appreciate, na sa panahon natin, nandyan po yung biyaya ng Panginoon, nandyan yung awa ng Panginoon, yung grace ng Panginoon, hindi tayo pinapatay. Despite the fact na for how many years nag-celebrate tayo ng kung ano-anong mga pagan holidays, e eh dito sa panahon na to, pagdating nyo po sa verse 26, Ang, ang, sabi, ang, sabi, ang sabi ni Moses, yung mga sa Panginoon, sa Panginoon, lumapit sa akin. Yung hindi, humiwalay. At ano po ang nangyayari sa kanila? Makita niyo po dyan, pinatay. Even before that, gustong tapusin ng Panginoon yung mga tao na hindi sumusunod sa kanya. Can you imagine after those, hinatik yung dagat. Tumawid kayo sa dagat. Ten plagues na pinagdaanan ng Egypt. And yet, makakalimutan lang ng basta-basta. Ganon po ka, medyo ka, hindi medyo, but ganon, ganon kadali makalimutan tao sa sa kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Alright? So, itong na, pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon ngayon na dapat inoobserve natin yung mga feast na to and dalangin ko po na magawa natin siya na hindi na tayo magpatuloy dun sa mga old practices natin. Alright, one thing na gusto ko pong makita Saan ang galing itong mga to? Bakit nagbago-bago ngayon yung mga piyesta? Ayan, bago, bakit may Christmas? Bakit may Easter? Bakit may, may, may Santa Claus? Alright? Bakit may, bakit may Valentine's Day? Bakit may kung ano-ano pang feast? Okay? And, pag, nung malala nyo po, yung, yung Daniel chapter 7, yung image nung prophecy ni Daniel, you go back in Daniel chapter 7. And ito pa, papakita ng scripture sa atin dito. Kung bakit nagkaganito yung mga days natin, yung mga kalendaryo natin, bak- bakit nagkagulo-gulo. Alright, Daniel chapter 7, hindi ko po babasahin lahat. I'll read on verse 23. I'll read on verse 23. Ang sabi po rito, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. So kung makikita nyo po na yung picture nung yung prophecy na yon yung taas is the Babylonian, ang kasunod is Medo-Persian, 
then ang kasunod is Greek or Greece, then and the lower part is the Romans. And if you and Romans po ang pinag-usapan natin dito, yung pang-apat. All right? Verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high. All right? So, ang pinag-usapan natin is yung Roman Empire. And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. Ano po ang babaguhin niya? Times and laws. Babaguhin niyo yung, yung appointed time, yung mood din na, gina, na tinalaga ng Panginoon, babaguhin niya. Pati yung batas ng Panginoon, babaguhin niya. Yung Ten Commandments, gagawin niya na lang siya, pahabain niya lang yung, yung pangsampo. Alright? Sabi niya, And they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. And sa mga susunod na verses, that will come on the revelation. Pero makita niyo po kung saan nanggaling, kung bakit nagkakagulo-gulo ngayon, kung bakit hindi naiintindihan yung mga feast, yung mga holidays. It's because of the fourth kingdom na sinabi rito, babaguhin niya yung times and babaguhin niya yung laws. But there will come a time pagdating sa revelation na matatapos lahat ito. And ituturok ng Panginoon yung tamang yung ta- y- yung tamang celebration ng dapat na mga dapat talaga sin- sinese-celebrate ng tao. Okay? Kaya nga sinabi niya, come out of that Babylon. Come out. Umalis kayo diyan sa sistema na yan. Kasi hindi yan ng tama. Kasi bakit? Binago nila eh. Ito po 'yun. Ito po yung prophecy ni Daniel na 'yon. So binago nila. So dapat ngayon binubukas sa isipan natin Ibalik natin ang old parts. Ibalik natin kung ano po talaga yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. Sundin po natin. Sir? Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Gary, for opening that. And actually, I prepared to you just for you, just for us to understand that we're not really following a godly calendar, but we are following a pagan calendar. All right. So, here on your screen, alam ko hindi nyo maintindihan yan. Kaya pinapakita ko lang sa inyo. <laughs> Pero uh, if you go here, up here, you see Feb, March, April, May, June, uh, se- September, October. It's actually a calendar. Ang hirap ng kalendaryo nila noon. No? This is the Roman calendar. All right? This was used before 45, 46 BC. All right? Now, After this, you have the Julian calendar. All right? Julian calendar, you can research that. Julian calendar, why is it called Julian calendar? Because it was proposed by Julius Caesar. All right? And that happened in 45 BC called the Julian calendar. Yan po ang ginagamit nila until the 1500s. All right? Now, what, what calendar are we using now? We're using the Gregorian calendar, which was named after Pope Gregory the Thirteenth. All right, Pope Gregory the Thirteenth, and it was introduced in October fifteen, uh, October October fifteen eighty two. So bagong bago lang po. Eh, hindi hindi naman ganong kabago kasi it's been uh, 500 years now. Okay, 500. 400, 500 years old. Pero kita nyo how it has changed times. Now, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7. Basahin uli natin yun. Napakalinaw nung sinabi po dyan. And we're talking about the Roman Empire. Alright? Katulad ng sinabi ni Brother Gary, we're talking about Rome. So, this is the appointed time. Yahuwah has his own calendar. And if you notice, you read scripture, ang nakasulat po lagi dyan, on the first day of the month, on the 14th day of the month, on the seventh month, on the first month, all right? May nakasulat on the month of Abib, ganun, ganun. But we don't use that calendar anymore, all right? We're not using the Abib calendar, the Nisan calendar. Why? Because we're based on paganism already. We have, nung dumila tayo sa mundong ito, pinanganak si Brother MB on December 16, at calendar na po ng mundo ang gamit natin. Which calendar? The calendar that the Romans introduced from the first one that I showed you up to the Gregorian calendar, yun po yung evolution yan. Pero thinking about it, we are under, we are still under the Roman Babylonian Empire. 
Okay? Bakit ko sinabi yung Babylonian Empire? Because Babylon means confusion. So basically, it's the Roman confused empire, which has given us confusion of dates, confusion of appointed times. Una -una, hindi nga natin alam to dati. We did not even stop at uh, Leviticus 23. Even me, I, I would admit in probably in the 10 times I've read the scripture over and over, Leviticus 23 was just like a story to me na, ah, ito pala yung appointed times. Hindi naman para sa atin yan. So I really don't care what it says. But now, I see the importance of it and understanding it makes me ashamed of myself of not following it in the past years that I've been reading scripture. Alright? Madami pong nakasulat dito sa scripture na Hinayaan lang natin lumipas, but now Yahweh has opened our eyes to understanding it more. Ngayon, mas malinaw na tayo ngayon ay nasa loob ng sistemang magulo. Alright? Yung Okto pang sampung buwan. Yung September pang siyam na buwan. Magulo, di ba? Which is to be 7 and 8. <laughs> Pero nakikita natin how it has been changed. And sabi niya sa Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, it says here, and think to change times. All right? When we talk about times, it's talking about calendar dates. It's talking about the uh, Sabbaths. It's talking about change of worship days. And ito yung masaklap. He will change laws because Yahuwah has appointed His appointed times. Sabi ng Panginoon, ito yung mga araw ko na susundin nyo. But they changed it and you woke up in this world not realizing that it's no longer Yahuwah's dates which are being celebrated. Nakuha nyo? Kaya nga po, we really have to dig in. Brother MB, New Testament na tayo. Inalis na po yan ni Jesus Christ lahat. Eh, that's not true. Because find me a verse that says that, okay, prove to me or give me evidence that Yahusha said he abolished things. Kasi kung gagamitin nyo po sa akin yung Ephesians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, read it again and understand the context. In Ephesians chapter 2, don't forget the word there, enmity, the word there, conflict. When that abolishment happened in that verse, because Yahuwah never changed his laws. And even Yahusha himself said, he did not come to destroy any law or prophet. He did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. He came to what? To fulfill the law. Alright? He was the fulfillment of the law. At hindi po ibig sabihin nun, destruction of the law. He did it. Ang, hindi po ang ibig sabihin nun, uh, abolishing of the law or removing of the law. It's basically, he fulfilled it he, it, he manifested it in his life. He did it in his life. Kaya nga po sabi sa Romans chapter 3, do we then make void the law? No. We should not. Is it God forbid? Yeah. We establish the law. We establish the Torah. And these feast days or these moed, are appointed times. All right, last few verses. Numbers chapter 15. Hindi ko na sasabihin last verse. Last few verses. <laughs> Numbers chapter 15. And you can find this also in the book of Exodus. Numbers chapter 15. All right, verse 15. Numbers chapter 15, verse 15. I'll start with verse 14. And if a stranger sojourn with you, all right, so regardless, if you are from the roots of Israel or you just really want to follow Yahuwah, you have to think, I want to be an Israelite. All right? Sabi po dyan sa verse 14. Or whosoever be among you in your generations and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, as you do, so he shall do. Yung gusto niyang sumunod sa mga batas ninyo. Sa mga offering ninyo. Verse 14, uh, 15, one ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you, an ordinance forever in your generations. So basically, Yahuwah said, 
the same laws, the same ordinance given to you is the same for the strangers. So kung Gentile ka, sige, sabihin natin, the New Testament talks about Gentile. We're still talking about the Israelites and Yahuwah said to follow the laws of the Israelites. Now the danger here is going into Judaism. All right, Judaism has so many ad added laws and Brother Gary can testify to that. <laughs> there are so many added laws and added traditions and uh, I've also read even uh, the feast of the day of trumpets uh, Rosh Hashanah even Rosh Hashanah which has been made as a new year na hindi naman talaga new year because it's only the seventh month is an added uh, tradition all right not I'm not uh, expert in Judaism, but I know that it's the day of trumpets, it's a day of show for a day of shouting, and it is a commanded day on the first day. Of it. All right, let's continue. In uh, verse 15, uh, verse 16, one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. So napakalinaw pong kuman niya na ang batas ng Israelites ay magiging batas ng stranger or ng Gentile. Alright? What is a Gentile? Nations. Or sometimes called heathen. Why? Because they do not follow the appointed times. They do not follow the laws. They do not follow the Sabbath. Pero kung, kung nais nilang mag-join to be an Israelite and he wants to offer to Yahuwah, he wants to be part of Yahuwah's people, Tatanggapin siya ng Panginoon and that's written in Romans chapter 11 as well talking about the grafting in. That law is applicable to that man. Alright? So makikita natin if we want to be part of Yah's people and if we are believers of Yahusha HaMashiach which is the purpose of Yahusha HaMashiach is to point us back to Yahuwah is to point us back to, to understanding what Moshe was given all right, sabi nga sa so Psalm 19, Yahuwah's laws are perfect, converting the soul. If it converts the soul, what's wrong with it? Bakit takot na takot tayo sa mga batas ng Panginoon? So, it clearly says here that the laws given to them should be applicable to us. Whether we are Israelites by blood or Gentiles who want to follow Yahuwah. Maybe we are part of the mixed multitude. I do not know, but for sure, for me, I want to follow Yahuwah, so I will observe the feast days. All right? I'm not going to observe any pagan holiday anymore. We are only to observe the feast days. All right? So later on, pag-aaralan natin, how can we calculate? Kasi ngayon, umaasa, maaring umaasa tayo sa Google, umaasa tayo sa mga uh, research, but we can study that we can actually calculate the days and understand the moon sightings. Kaya mapapansin mo yung mga Muslim, di ba? Mga pag-telescope, titignan nila kung lumabas na yung crescent ng moon. It does make sense. It actually makes sense because uh, if you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, it tells us that lights, the sun, the moon, the stars are signs for seasons. And seasons are actually appointed times. It talks about the appointed times of Yahweh. Remember when we read uh, Leviticus chapter 23 at sinabi seasons is the same word used there as moed. Alright? One last verse. Ito, last talaga to. I hope. Leviticus chapter 19. Go to Leviticus chapter 19. Gentile ka? Pag-usapan natin yung Gentile. Leviticus chapter 19. All right. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, sorry, verse 33. Okay. Verse 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. Alright? So, if a stranger wants to be part of Yah's people, hindi yung magnanakaw, ah. <laughs> yung taong gusto talaga sumunod kay Yahuwah. 
It says there in verse 34, you shall, uh, verse 33, you shall not vex him. Hindi mo siya aapihin, verse 34, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. Napakagandang uh, batas nito. Because it gives us that hope that if, even if we're not Israelites, we are still to be loved by the Israelites. Alright? At sabi po dito, Thou shalt love him as thyself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So, the promises are given to Israel. But regardless if you're an Israelite or a Gentile, heathen by nature, by blood, alright? Hindi nga natin alam kung Israelite tayo o hindi. Pero regardless, ang importante, if you want to follow Yahuwah, you will be accepted, alright? By believing in Yahusha HaMashiach and observing the laws given to the Israelites. Alright? I hope that makes it clear. And I hope you remove that misconception. Kung kasama kayo dun sa bandwagon na nagsasabi si Brother MB, si Brother Gary, ay puro batas na lang. That's wrong. Because we still believe in the Savior. We still believe in the Mashiach. Alright? That Yahusha HaMashiach is the Messiah and believing in Him is necessary to obtain salvation. Pero believing in Him is also believing in the law, believing in the Torah, because He is the Word. He is the Word of Elohim that you can see in the book of Genesis was the helper of all of our patriarchs. So it all makes sense to believe in Yahushua Mashiach because even the Old Testament patriarchs believed in Him. Alright? So I hope that makes it clear. And alisin nyo po sa isip na puro bata si Brother MB, you need to follow the law. That's what I can say. At kung babalikan nyo yung sinabi ko, kung hindi kayo pupunta ng langit, kung hindi kayo alam, kung hindi nyo alam yung Torah, I would still stand to that because the Torah is the law, it is part of the Word, and Yahusha is the Word. Because if you believe in the Word, you should be starting to follow the Word. Alright? So Brother Gary, anything you would like to add and finish with? Alright. Kaya nga mga kapatid, ito na uunawaan natin yung mga feast. Pag nakikiselebrate pa rin tayo, doon sa mga previous feasts or mga holidays, kumbaga. Kung hanggang ngayon makikiselebrate pa rin tayo sa ngayon, it is more likely we are celebrating hindi, yun talaga yun. We are celebrating a pagan practices. Why? Nabanggit kanina yung, yung Julian calendar. Sino ang nag, nag-establish? Si Julius Caesar. Sino, sino, sino yung tao na yun? He is a Roman general. He is a Roman general na napakalaki yung influensya sa political affairs ng Rome. Then after that, we are following right now Gregorian calendar. And if you are if you are celebrating December 25, if you are celebrating February 14, you are with the Gregorian calendar festival. Okay? And sino nag-establish? Si Pope Gregory the 13th. Sino si Pope Gregory the 13th? Siya po ang leader ng Katolikong Simbahan. So kaya nga, tayo ngayon, magsa-celebrate tayo on the, on the 18th ng trumpets, piece of trumpets. Or, or, then, after 10 days, the atonement. Then after another 5 days, that would be Sukkot or piece of boots. Wala po yan sa kalendaryo ng mga Gre- Gregorian kalendar or sa kalendaryo na sinusunod natin ngayon. Why? Because it is the feast of the Most High, our Elohim, Yahuwah. Yung mga piyesta na sinusunod natin ngayon, sinicelebrate ng mundo, that's a Gregorian feast or the Roman Empire feast. Alright? So maunawaan po natin yon. Galing po sa scripture yun. Babaguhin nila yung batas, babaguhin nila yung laws, and babaguhin nila yung mga holidays. Yung mga holidays. Yun po yung sinabi sa Daniel. And lahat nangyayari pag inaaral natin yung salita ng Panginoon. Mauunawaan na po na, naman po natin. Ipapaunawa sa atin yan ng Rawak Hakodesh. And salamat at namulat po yung mata natin ngayon. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Amen, amen. I know I said last verse. I'll give you a last, last verse. Go to Colossians chapter 2 because a lot of people are confused with this verse and use this verse. Uh, uh, it's a very controversial verse. But uh, 
I, I wrote in my Bible, not anymore. <laughs> Go to verse 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Sabi po dyan, Let no man therefore judge you in me. Kita mo, kita mo, brother Emi. Huwag mo kong husgaan sa bagnet ko, ha? Let's continue. Or in drink. <laughs> or in respect on an holy day. Oh, oh. Huwag mong judge yung Christmas ko, ha? Uh, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now, if you notice that verse, it's actually talking about Old Testament Scripture. It talks about new moons. What are the new moons uh, in Scripture? You celebrate new moons. The first day is a new moon. All right? It talks about full moons, new moons. Uh, the Sabbath days. Bakit? Nag-observe ka ba ng Sabbath days? Why am I going to judge you if you're not observing the Sabbath day? Now, in other translations, it says there, let no man therefore condemn you. All right? I think that's a better word to use because these days, these elements here in verse 16, meat, drink, holy day, new moon, Sabbath day, are commandments of Yahuwah. All right? And dahil galing tayo sa pagan, Walang nag-celebrate niyan. When we talk about meat, yung kinakain nating meat are unclean meat. Now, let's continue with verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. Now, let me ask you this question. Verse 17 is referring to verse 16, right? So, if you're saying a holiday is Christmas, is that referring to... For the shadow of things to come? Is that referring about the body of Christ? Oh, birth ni Jesus Christ yun eh. Hindi. Hindi po yun ang pinag-uusapan natin. Because the shadow of things to come, now listen, the shadow of things to come are the feast days. Alright? The feast days. Why? The Passover was a shadow, the Exodus Passover was a shadow of Yahusha dying on the cross as the Passover lamb. All right? The Ten Commandments was a shadow of the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. All right? So makikita natin, these are shadows of things to come. The holy days. The first fruits is the, the shadow of the resurrection of Yahusha HaMashiach. These are shadows. Now, the day of trumpets, the day of shofar, Day of Shouting, Day of Atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles, why is it commandment? Because the Feast of Booths, it said to commemorate it because so that you remember when, when the Israelites were in Egypt, dwell, I were in the wilderness, dwelling in booths. Now, this is a shadow of things which are still coming. All right. So balikan natin yung Christmas. Saan mo makikita doon sa Old Testament yung Christmas? Wala. All right? Wala doon. So these are not no one nobody will condemn you for celebrating Christmas. In fact, they will love you. No one will judge you for celebrating Christmas. Pero he's talking to the believers, if you start celebrating Sabbaths, if you start celebrating feast days, if you start observing your meats, clean and unclean, let no man judge you. Wag mo ang hayaan i-condemn kanila. Because these are a shadow of things to come. Alright? So I hope that's clear because it's a controversial verse na sasabihin sa inyo, wag mo kong i-judge sa Sunday worship ko. Kasi sabi dito sa verse 16, wag nyo kong husgahan doon sa holy days. The question is, is it Yahuwah's holy day? Is it Yahuwah's holy day? No, it's not. And as I said, it's a challenge to you. Give me a verse. Give me scripture that says, worship Yahuwah on Sunday, on the first day of the week. Alam ko marami kayo makikita ang first day of the week. But did they command you? Yun yung, yun yung challenge ko sa inyo. Did the scripture command you to celebrate the first day of the week? Never. Alright? Kahit ibigay nyo pa sa akin yung mga first day of the week dyan sa New Testament, there's huge evidence that it is a Sabbath. Alright? 
So, just wanted to make that para mabawas na din yan sa ating pag-aaralan because that's one verse that confuses a lot of believers. Okay? We really have to look into tingnan nyo din yung uh, I would say pag magulo, try reading the ESV. I'm not saying the ESV is perfect. I'm not saying the King James is perfect. Just uh, look into it. I usually look into the Septuagint as well for Old Testament scripture because that's old. That's old, old, old. All right? That's ancient old. So that's Greek translated to English. Pero it could be a good reference. I'm not saying it, it can be reliable all the time. Pero buksan po natin ang ating horizon in studying scripture, especially if we're studying words like this, Hebrew ay mas maiintindihan natin ang mga salita ng Panginoon. Alright, so thank you Brother Gary. Thank you everyone who stayed with us tonight and I hope you learned something and then we'll continue studying uh, Yom Tirua, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot in the next uh, uh, scripture studies. Alright, Brother Gary, can you please close us in a word of prayer? Alright. Uh, naway na pagpala po tayo ng mga napag-aaralan natin ngayon and dagdag po sa ating kaalaman. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Father Yahuwah in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, the Elohim of our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yacob. We praise and thank you, Father, sa pagbukas ng aming sipan. Banal na spiritong ang uwak ha kudis. Salamat po. Salamat, Panginoong Yahusha, sa lahat ng ginawa niyo po para sa amin. Thank you so much, Panginoon, sa pagpapaunawa sa amin na inyong mga feast, sa pagpapakita sa amin ng katotohanan, Panginoon, sa pagbukas ng aming puso at isipan. Na maintindihan namin, Panginoon, na yung mga feast na sineselebrate namin before, at it is not your appointed time, but your appointed time is yung feast na inutos niyo po sa amin na gagawin namin sa mga susunod na araw. Salamat, Panginoon. May mga bagay kaming nagawa before, Panginoon. Patawarin niyo po kami. We did it in our ignorance, Panginoon. But salamat, salamat. Thank you so much sa pagbukas ng aming puso at isipan na pinapakita niyo po ito sa amin ngayon. Salamat po. Sa inyo ang kapurihan, magpakailanman, Panginoon. Gabayan mo kami sa aming pagpapahinga. Ibigyan niyo po kami ng maayos na kapahingahan sa aming paghihiwahiwalay. And i-restore niyo po yung mga lakas namin. Ang kinabukasan, gisingin niyo po kami, Panginoon, na may panibagong kalakasan na makapagpuri po sa inyo, makapagpaguri po sa inyo. Salamat sa lahat ng ito. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa inyong dakilang pangalang Yahuwah at sa inyong anak, ang aming tagapagligtas, ang Yahusha Mashiach. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Moed. Moed. Yung kakalimutan. And uh, you can study it on your own. Uh, it's Mem, Wow, Ayin, and Dalet. All right, so you re do some research on the word. You learn a lot. There, there's a lot of word study in YouTube and a lot of articles about it. So you research on your own, and makikita nyo. These are very important appointed times. All right, so thank you, brethren. Good night and stay safe. Yahweh bless you all, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye bye. Shalom.